in the next set of videos we're going to keep coming back to this painting because this painting to me I've always found fascinating. This painting is called the Kallenberger Farming Family. It was painted in 1938 by an artist called Adolf Weissel and this painting is the painting that sat on the wall of Hitler's office in Nazi HQ in Berlin. And I find this painting fascinating because I think this painting to an extent summarizes what happened to the German people between 1933 and 1939. And it's the German people that I want to really focus on in probably the next four or five videos. So again, let's go back to our timeline. You can split the Nazi era up into two really clear defined sections, pre-war and war. And still at the moment, I want to focus on this pre-war era. And in the next set of videos for Unit 3, I want to focus on the changing lives of the German people between 1933 and 1939. And we're going to look at different groups. We're going to look at workers. We're going to look at women. We're going to look at young people. And we're going to look at persecuted groups. And in particular, we're going to look at the lives of Jewish people. So with each, we'll do a video on each of these and we'll cover what happened to those people. Now, before I jump into the specifics of this video, I want to introduce you to what a word. And that word that we're going to use a lot in the next few videos, and that word is Volksgemeinschaft. Volksgemeinschaft. Now, this is not a term that was created in Nazi Germany. Actually, it began being used in the First World War, but the Nazis really used it a lot. And really, really simply, it means people's community. And the Nazis were trying to create a Volksgemeinschaft, a people's community in Germany. Now, the Nazis' view of this is interesting because it is not everyone's community. And I'm already, I'm imagining that all of you already are thinking about, well, which people are included in this people community and which people aren't. So Volksgemeinschaft is something that, again, we're going to come back to in the next few videos. So let's jump in with the specifics. In this video today, I'd like to look at, did the Nazis create a Volksgemeinschaft for the German workers? So did they create a people's community for the German workers? Did they improve the lives of these German workers or not? Now, if you look at this graph, actually, this graph really tells one of the big stories. So the Nazis obviously took power in 1933, and you can see that in 1933, unemployment was absolutely through the roof in Germany. Just over 30% of the German people were unemployed in 1933. That figure is incredible. It's very large. However, by 1939, as you can see on this graph, that unemployment figure had significantly dropped. I mean, it had dropped to the point where it was one of the lowest it had been in the last 40 years. In fact, actually, there were only 35,000 people who were unemployed out of 25 million. So did the Nazis improve lives for the German workers? This graph implies it did because it removed unemployment. However, when we look at the German workers today, the big picture is on the surface. It looks like things are improving, but there's always a but. And in particular with the German workers, Unemployment did drastically reduce. However, wages were frozen at 1933 levels. And actually, prices in that period still continued to rise. So at 1939, they were still being paid the same wages that they were paid in 1933, six years earlier. But wages in that six-year period, prices in that six-year period, had already continued to rise. That means that actually, although your wage coming in was the same, it was paying for a lot less stuff. Families as a result really struggled to live. In addition to that, workers were expected to pay a voluntary tax and that tax was called the Winter Relief. The Winter Relief Fund. Now the Winter Relief Fund was designed to provide soup stations for the poor and you can see a poster advertising this on the right hand side. And the SA pressurised families to pay 3% of their earnings into this winter relief fund. And when I say pressurised, I mean basically they forced them to. So as a result, yes, unemployment did significantly reduce. Good thing. But 
real wages actually went down because prices continued to rise. And actually the amount of money that you had in your pocket significantly went down because you were forced to do things like this and pay into the winter relief fund. Now, when the Nazis took power, and we looked at this in a previous video, they got rid of the trade unions and they replaced the trade unions with this organization called the Deutsche Arbeitsfront. In other words, the German Labour Front. We can simplify that to the, it called the DAF, the Deutsche D Arbeitswerk A F Front. All right, so the German Labour Front. And the German Labour Front had lots of different functions in this period. It had four main functions that I'd like to look at in the next few minutes. Something called strength through joy, something called beauty through labor, the Reich's labor movement, and the Volkswagen scheme. So all of these four things really fell under the wing of the Deutsche Arbeitsfront. And the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, as I said, replaced the trade unions. So it was there to improve the lot of the workers, supposedly. And again, there's a but. So strength through joy provided really cheap um, leisure and tourism for German workers. So if you were a member of the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, and by the way, there were 29 million people who were joined up into this by the end of 1930s. Strength through joy, you could buy cheap tickets to the theatre. You could buy cheap tickets to concerts. This is a concert that you can see being performed to German workers in this picture. You could sign up for really cheap holidays and cruises. Now that sounds like a great thing, but at all of these events, there was some sort of political indoctrination happening at the same time. So if you went on a Nazi cruise, part of your day would be you'd have to listen to a political lecture. So again, is it good? Not really. Beauty through labour, its whole purpose was designed to improve the lot of the workers on the factory floor. So beauty through labour in some really big factories, and this is a Siemens factory here, beauty through labour provided extra toilets, extra showers, extra changing facilities. Quite a good thing. The Reich's labour movement was designed entirely to remove unemployment, and it did so by creating huge employment opportunities on big state projects. One of the things that the Nazis did significantly in the 1930s was build autobahn or motorways. And you can see a picture of the motorway here. This is one of the first motorways that was created in Germany. And the Reich's labour service employed thousands of thousands of people to build things like these motorways. And again, good, it's reducing unemployment. However, all of those people who were part of the Reich's labor service, again, had to face extra political indoctrination as a result. They had to listen to lectures, they had to attend rallies. The fourth element of the DAF was the Volkswagen scheme. And if you don't know the Volkswagen, Volkswagen in German literally translates as the people's car and the people's car the beetle that you can see here which is probably one of the most iconic cars of the 20th century actually was a Nazi design and all German people were introduced to this scheme in 1938 and in 1938 amongst massive fanfare German workers were given the opportunity to buy into a scheme where they could end up with a Volkswagen so all German workers had to pay five marks a week. And if you got, when you paid five marks, you could buy one of these stamps that would then sit in your book. And you can see that book on the right hand side picture here. So you filled your book with these stamps, with these five mark stamps. And eventually, supposedly, after a number of years, you'd get a car. No one got a car, no one at all. Not one worker got a car. The German state, the Nazis, took all of that money and they didn't give anybody a car. So, if we're going to go back to the question of today, did the Nazis create a Volksgemeinschaft for the German workers? On the surface, things look good. They reduced unemployment, they got cheaper holidays, they got better facilities, they were had a scheme where they could buy into a car. Dig under the surface, that Volksgemeinschaft was a fraud. Unemployment did reduce, but the wages actually 
meant people still really struggled to fe survive their families. The strength free joy holidays and leisure activities were a nice idea but involved massive political indoctrination. As to the Reich's labour service and the Volkswagen scheme was a complete sham. Did the Nazis create a Volkswagen for the German workers? In my opinion, no. <laughs>